ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. It was absolutely beautiful here in LA. I know a lot of places got a lot of snow. Uh, Chicago got another six inches of snow. I am so sorry to hear that. Um, yes, too bad, too sad. But nonetheless, you will be all right. That is Chicago. But the Sherrard Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio, ladies and gentlemen. You can listen to the best episodes of the Sherrard Show, such as Rick Ross, The Manhattans, The Originals, ladies and gentlemen, as well as our recent interview with Robbie B and more. Just follow the prompts on iHeartRadio and listen to the best episodes of your life. And then you can also see this episode on television at Essence TV. Don't miss it. Just look on your monitor now. You see Essence Television Network and you can see the best episodes of your life. And then lastly, it's brought to you by Queen Team Apparel, the best apparel you can ever wear. Look at that on your monitor. You can see the Sherrard Show t-shirts as well as wear for your wife, your husband, and all of those you love, just go to Queen Team Apparel and you can get the best clothes made custom in your life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman is the son of an icon. This man is the icon. He's an icon. He is the Duke of Earl. He's the son of the Duke of Earl and so many of the hits that he has as well. One of my fan favorites, he was actually on the Sherrard show a few years back. And this, his son is the lead singer of the originals. If you don't know the originals, one of my favorite songs by them is Baby, I'm For Real. But my all-time favorite is uh, Angel Baby. I just absolutely love that song. And I'm so honored to have this gentleman on the show, Mr. Franz Forrest. Welcome this evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank God. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I appreciate you stopping by for a moment as well. I'm going to start off first, uh, Mr. Forrest. What was it like growing up with such an iconic father? Wow, it was exciting. Um, I remember when he first took me on stage with him at the Regal Theater in Chicago. I was very young. Um, he took me out on stage and he said, he said, this is my son. And, and I heard everybody you know, clapping and screaming. And you see all these bright lights, you know, on the stage. And then I walked off the stage and I think that did something to me. I love the way they were applauding. Uh, how, so, how old were you then? Ooh, about five or six year old. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Now for those who don't know, the Rigo Theater was one of the biggest places in town where the, the likes of Sam Cooke performed there, Jackie Wilson, James Browns, the originals, the Defon all of the big names, and even Red Fox doing stand-up com com comedy, et cetera, came through the Rigo. So when your dad was doing it, it was still popping at the place, correct? Still popping, uh, yeah, it, you know, he would sell out at the Rigo. Uh, matter of fact, that's, that's where the Jacksons were discovered. Uh, at the Regal, uh, uh, Michael Jackson and his family, uh, the Shy Lights, matter of fact, Marshall had saw them. And so he mentioned it to Bobby Taylor. He said, you got to see these kids, <laughs> you know? And well, I didn't know that they were discovered at the Regal while wow, you learn something every day. At the Regal, the Regal, and they had had a, a deal previous to that, but the big deal with Motown, heading to Motown, um, uh, Marshall Thompson had saw them perform. And he told Bobby Taylor, you got to see these kids. And so Bobby called uh, Susan to pass. Uh, he took him to his, his, his place. And he said, uh, and he, he said, Susan, you need to come down to my room. You know, come down to my place. He said, what were you talking about? Come down to your place. <laughs> and he said, no, I want you to see these kids. And she saw them. And, you know, remember, and so, you know, the rest is history. She took them to Motown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, Michael, they, 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 were, they were everything he said they were. Wow. Now, 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 when it comes to you, Gene, I mean, when it comes to you, uh, DeFrance, now, many people may say, wow, well, he only made it big because of his dad. But for example, I had um, Reggie Dozier on the show, and then I had Lamont Dozier on it. And my question was to them, Lamont, did you make it big because of your dad? Or was it because of your own merit? He said, my dad didn't help me with anything. You know, I didn't use my name. I had my own talent that allowed me to make it. Was that the case with you as well? Yeah, I mean, if they what they can do, what, what it can do, being a, having a famous parent, they can get you in the door. They can get you around the people that can help you. But then in the, in the long run, the proof is in the pudding. Once they put you before the people, you have to bring the goods. Okay? Now, that, that's one thing. They can, the name can get you in the door. They'll talk to you. They'll see you. They'll receive your, your CD. They'll receive your cassette, whatever you had been on for a period of time, cassette tape. Uh, CD, you know, digital platform, they'll receive it. They'll receive you, but then it's up to you 
to show them what you can do. So now, I would say, so you, that means, and they can tell if you've been practicing, you know, so it's not just because you have a famous uh, father or mother, they can get you in the door, but you have to, you have to, all, before they get to get take, before you go in that door, you better have been practicing and you better be ready. So tell me about, so, so DeFrance, tell me about the day you auditioned to become who you are today. What was that like? <laughs> wow. Um, hmm. Well, the first thing, it, it, it's, a, it's a series of things. It just wasn't one audition. It's a series of auditions. Uh, say, you, say you're doing talent shows. You go out and you do your best, and 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 you, every time you you, you do go somewhere, you, I don't care if it's two people, five people, a hundred people, you do your best, but you never know who's watching. And so um, I I took that to heart, and so every time I gave my best, and, and most of the time it came out great. I ended up winning the contest or coming in second or first, and then somebody said you need to go see such and such, but then somebody that you saw previously maybe put some things together and then next thing you know, they're working for it. They have their own label or they're working for a label and they remember, I remember you. When you were singing at that talent show, now I can help you. I told you you were good when I saw you, but I really couldn't do anything at that time. But now I'm here. And so, and that's why you're supposed to have a good attitude you know, and be likable. You know what I'm saying? Don't be arrogant. Because that person that you think this is, that they don't have it now, that don't mean somebody's going to bless them with a position to be able to help you in the future. Now you're preaching. Now you're preaching. There we go. So you be kind. You be kind and gracious and say thank you, you know. And then, <clears throat> and so those things happen. People will hear, they say, well, this guy, he didn't have a deal on the table at the time, but he, he kept telling me about you, how good you were. So when the slide came open, I was ready. I've been practicing all the time, doing the talent shows, uh, doing sessions, you know, um, working out so you keep your air, your lungs good, you know, you know what I'm saying? So when the time comes, you just got to be ready. So when it came time for that, I was, I was, I was ready, you know, uh, and from doing the talent shows, I, I kind of learned what, what was going to work, what was not going to work. And then my friend said to Franz, my friend, a friend of mine, he was doing comedy, he said to Franz, you, keep, you came in second here, you came in third there. He said, I know how you can win. You see, you can do Stevie Wonder songs good. You can do Luther songs good. You can do Aretha, uh, what's her uh, Guys, Nice songs good. Jeffrey Osborne, people, Bryson. Make a tape and do little, all the best parts of their song. Do like a section of that song, a section of that song. And, and, and I took what he said to heart and I did. I got a guy to mix a tape for me. And when I put that on, I hit him with the Luther. I hit him with this, I hit him with the people. And the crowd went crazy. And I began to win every time. Wow. Every time. Wow. Right, you know? So I took his advice, you know, I just said, oh man, I know what I'm doing. No, I said, okay, let me try this. You know what I'm saying? Because some people that have been doing, they may be doing comedy or whatever, but they know what works. You know, the people, they've, they've seen so many things and, and then you take that knowledge and you add it with your knowledge. And I began to win those things. And then I was, I was actually working on a, on a solo deal uh, with a, a producer named Dennis Nelson. And they were, I went to RCA, uh, I went to uh, another label, and and then, but then um, the Motown, he was working with another group called For Lovers Only, and then something happened with one of their members, but it didn't work out. So he said to Franz, I know we're working on your solo deal. Why don't you sing with the group? And then we'll go back to your solo deal because they're ready to go right now. He had started recording songs on them, and and I said, um, I said, I said, let me think about it. I said, well, let me hear them. I said, let me hear them, right? Because <laughs> I want to hear what, what I'm getting into. And, he, and so he gave me, back then they had the, um, he had the Walkman, you know. Oh. It was a rain, it was a rain, right? And I put the song on, <clears throat> and I'm like, I said, okay. You know, he was singing, I was like, and then he hit this note, he hit this note, and he held it for about 15 seconds. I was like, I stopped it. I said, wait a minute. I, you know, I wound it yesterday. Let me hear this again. I said, these guys can sing. I said, I, I said, I think I better be part of this group. <laughs> you know. Wow. Now, now so, um, what's the history of the originals? How far did they go back? When did they first start? 
uh, wow, this is like 69, 670, way back, way mm -hmm. back. Now, um, Jim Gilstrap, we were just talking off air, um, people who don't know him, first of all, he's a legendary individual, one of the yes. kindest people you can ever meet. He's been frequent on the Sherrod show and we, he's in our prayers because he did recently suffer a stroke. But um, with Jim, he is the voice of good times. When good times is coming on, yes. he's singing that on there. And also at the very beginning of You Are the Sunshine of My Life, he's beginning that before Stevie Wonder jumps in. What was it like working with such a legendary individual such as Jim? It's, uh, it's amazing because he, he's a pro. He knows what he's doing. He has a very good ear. So you're not going to be singing fly. You're not going to be singing wrong around Jim. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it makes you want to, you know, step up your game because you know you're around professionals. And then with, with Hank Dixon, I got one on the right of me and I got one on the left of me. They both let, you know, let it so. And then his daughter, so, and we're, me and, and then me and Hank's daughter is in the middle. So we, we got to, you know, we have to bring it, you know. And so when we're rehearsing, um, we're not going to stop Rehearse until it's, it's until it's right. You, you rehearse like you're going to be on stage. So if you, if you sound good in rehearsal, you should sound the same way on the stage. So it, it, it was it was surreal. And then as I began to look up, you know, now you can look on the internet and look up all the things that Jim did and has done and played on. You're like, wow, I knew this, but I didn't know this. I know. So so it makes you like, okay, let me let me let me sing these songs rehearsal before I get to rehearsal. So when I get to where so they know I'm, I'm not playing around. I'm here to take care of business, you know, that I'm starting to be like them, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's, 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 it's very um, refreshing to be around professionals that know what they're doing. You know, um, a lot of groups don't have good chemistry. They have talent together, but they don't have the good chemistry. Oftentimes, that's why they don't stay together for too long. But it right. sounds like you all have great chemistry. Is that correct? Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, nobody disrespect anyone. If something you feel is not right, you, you just speak. You speak about it. You know, you don't hold it in. You speak about it, it but in a, a professional way. You know, a caring way. You, you know, not shouting and all this kind. You know, you, you talk about it. You know, because 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 the main thing you want to have that chemistry. So when you're on stage, it looks like you're having fun, and then when you're having fun, the crowd is having fun. Now, um, let's talk music. Let's talk deeper into music. Now, you grew up in an area, in an era, if I can guess it right, like Marvin Gaye, um, Temptation, Smokey Robinson, maybe even back to Sam Cooke's days. Is that correct? Well, Sam Cooke, um, he was a little, I was very young when he was, when he was actually here singing, but I remember his music. My mother played a lot of um, the Manhattans. She would play... Um, Marvin Gaye, of course, like you said, uh, Al Green. I mean, she, that's when they had albums. She, she would wear those albums out, um, and she would play um, the original. You know, I remember the originals. I remember uh, Stevie Wonder, um, and then uh, gospel. She would play uh, the Hawkins Family, um, Andre Crouch, and uh, Rance Allen, and uh, who else? The uh, there was one more, uh, Lionel Harris. Oh my goodness! Um, wow, yeah, he's, like, he's a cross. He crossed over mm -hmm. very quickly, you know, mm -hmm. to, the, to the masses. A lot of, a lot of people don't know, but yeah, he's a, he, and his voice is smooth, like he, like people Bryson. It was it was just clear and, and crisp, you know. And he crossed over. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I grew up around a lot of good music. Mm -hmm. So of so my dad, of course my dad. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, we, we can't miss we can't leave Michelle out your dad. <laughs> yeah, we, we cannot talk about, you know, I'm very um honored honored to have so many of those people you mentioned um on the show. The Manhattans were recently on the show. We had the Shy Lights on the show. Of course, as I mentioned, we had your dad on the show. Now, what is your perspective of music that you grew up listening to? Such and and for example, the originals. I mean, we, we're we're gonna play that in a moment. But what is your perspective of the music from the 60s and 70s and maybe even the 80s to now the 2000s? Is it any comparison or do you feel it's way different from what you're used to hearing? Oh, God. Music changes every maybe 10 years. It changes. So you can't be mad about it. It changes like everything else changes. Um, the music now is a little bit different. Uh, the music... Um, I would say the, the, the instruments have changed. It's not so, it's not so full. The track is not as full as it used to be with the orchestration and 
you know, all the things that we're used to in the 70s and the 60s, you know, where it was a real band, like the Funk Brothers playing and the, the band. Now they do a lot of things on the computer. And a lot of the lyrics are not, not as good as they used to be. It's not, not as, um, I would say, romantic. Like, it's more sexual than it is romantic to where anybody, you can play it anywhere and nobody will say, turn that off. You can't play that here. You know what I mean? It, it was, it, it really, it took their time and, and instead of rushing in to saying, you know, right to the point, it kind of romanced, the, as far as love song, they romanced the woman. It, you know, it was romantic. That is you, correct. By the time you get to the end of the song, okay, you know what they're talking about, but they didn't really say. Take yes. Advantage. You, know, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and then all, way, you know what they were saying, but it was it was like, okay, I get it. But you, you know, it's, it, that's interesting. That's interesting yeah. you say that because with your music, as well as the music of that time period, if a man had a hard time saying to his girl what he wanted to say, he would just play the record and then hold the phone to it. So it could tell her what he was trying to say or what he couldn't right. say. Is that correct? Right, exactly. And, and that's the kind of music that I love and, because you're talking to the women instead of talking about them. Um, and, and I commend, you know, your music. Now, let me ask you a question about that. Now, Rosie and the Originals, where did that come from? Well, Rosie's, that's, that's a different group. Mm -hmm. Rosie's is a different group. Rosie and the Originals is a different group. Um, a great group, because they, like you said, Angel Baby, that's a whole different group. Mm -hmm. The Originals, um, they started out doing backgrounds for a lot of acts at Motown. Like Stevie, on Stevie Wonder's record, uh, um, for once in my life, that's the original in the background. Um, in matter of fact, Gil, Gil Strap is singing on, on one of Stevie's records, and then that's the, and then that's the originals doing the background. Um, wow. Okay. A lot of people didn't know that. Uh, Function in the Junction. It's a lot of record. Uh, what becomes of a broken heart? That's the originals on the background. Oh, okay, okay, wow. That's so, some good stuff. So, Mar so Marvin, what happened was they was doing the background. Marvin went past the studio. He was like, who are you guys? Oh, well, I'm, 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 I'm Freddie. Uh, I'm, I'm Hank. You know, they, they still told him their names. And he said, yeah, I don't know what, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something with you guys. And he ended up writing, writing two big hits on them, The Bells and Baby, I'm For Real. Wow and, so, wow. and so after that, they said, oh, Marvin, he can write. He can write. After he wrote those hits, they said, oh, Marvin can write, you know? <laughs> and so, because, you know, a lot of, uh, before a lot of people were writing things for Marvin, you know, you know, he played the drums and things like that. So, um, so that, that, um, so then when he did that, that, that they gave them a career in the, in the music business. They had already had a lot of credits of doing backgrounds along with the Adante, sometimes it would be the originals and Adante singing background on a lot of the records. But then Marvin gave him a platform to be on their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. now for you, um, when you hear this particular song or, or artist, what do you do? Who's your favorite artist when you hear this particular song, it stops you in your tracks to this day? Right now, uh, Let Us See. He had a song called, uh, what is it? I will do anything for you. Anything for you. Uh, that song right there, if you listen to them lyrics, oh my God, that's a, that's a song you can say, you don't know how, you know what to say, you tell your babe, listen to this. <laughs> that song right there, um, wow. There's a song by Joe uh, called I Want to Know. Mm -hmm. The artist Joe. Yes, that's a great one. I love that song. Um, you said up today. Um, what else? Um, or even yesteryear. Yesteryear. Even there's the, always those songs that you know take you to a place because, um, for example, you know Curtis Mayfield sang to an era. A lot of times, you know, yeah. there was things going on in the civil rights. Uh, Marvin Gaye sang to the about the Vietnam, and you know, um, Bobby Womack sang about. Um, um, 110th Street and all these things, but is there a song like that, maybe even an anthem that still gets you even today? Wow. Um, hmm. Of course, My Girl, I love that song. Absolutely. Uh, there's a song by the Temps called Truly For You. Mm -hmm. I think Al McKay uh, wrote that. 
You know that song truly for you? Yeah, I sure do. I sure do. My love is true. My love is true. Yes, true. yes. Truly, truly, truly for you. Yeah, that song. Um, it's well, so thanks a God, thanks a lot, uh, Forrest, because now you got all of the, the lines blowing up. Now everybody want to uh, have some questions for you. We'll get to your questions, ladies and gentlemen. You'll yeah. speak, you'll you'll be able to ask some questions yeah. of Forrest. Give me a minute. Luther Vandross songs, uh, Superstar. Mm -hmm. um, it's so many, you know, beautiful and people rising. Of course, when I heard him, I was like, oh, man, how does this guy go from he's singing uh, right here, and then he goes to the false, and he comes back so smooth. And that's funny like, you say that. That's funny you say that, DeFrance, because I had Frida Payne on the show about a month ago, and she said that um, her one of her favorite singers is People Bryson, but she says when you when you uh, talk to him or hear him sing when he's not on stage, he sounds even better than when he's not on stage, and he let loose one night. She couldn't believe he sounds so good, so yeah. He does. That, that guy inspired me, you know. Uh, first of all, my dad, but then when I heard Peebo, I was like, I said, I got to sing like this guy. I say, because he goes from the false to the smooth, when you can't really tell, and it's so smooth, you know, I said, if I can do that, I can do anything. Wow. And so I began to train my voice to sing his songs. I was singing acapella, and so, and then, and then as far as runs, my stepdad helped me with those, and my dad has, has, perfect, my dad has perfect pitch. And then I was singing in the church, so that helped me with my spirit. Like, okay, when you sing it, sing it. Because when you sing in the church, you try to, it's like you're asking God to use you to bless those people, to stop them from committing suicide. To bring, you bring them joy. You bring them out of something that they're, that's, 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 that's got a hold on them. So you learn how to sing it. When you sing it, sing it. Don't, don't, don't play around with it, you know, because you're here to make people feel good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's mm -hmm. songs to make you cry. There's songs to make you dance, you know? And um, so you just practice. So the way to get there is to practice. So when it's time to, to do it, it's, it's like a piece of cake, you know what I'm saying? As long as, you know, nothing's going on, like you got a cold or, but even at those times, you got to learn what to do when you have those situations, when you got a cold or the flu, and you still got to perform. What do you do? You, I, you drink, I, you would drink some, maybe some tea with honey and lemon, but you want to loosen it up. You, whatever's in there, constructing it, you don't want to get it out. And then you pray, and then you go out there and do it. And somehow it still comes across, unless you just got straight glaring guys where you can't say nothing. But sometimes, if you got it, you still show up because nine times out of ten, if the crowd came to see you, they know the song. So you go out there, you sing as much as you can, you do this, they're gonna finish it for you. Wow! Wow! They're glad, they're glad you had the guts to show up, even though you you weren't fully there. You, they came to see you, you showed up. They know the song. It's a lot of times when we've been singing uh, and and we were singing and the crowd was singing louder than us. So if you're, in the, you're, the, you're there with 17,000 people or even 125 people and it's a smaller venue, if they sing a song, like when you hear back on, you hear the tape, when they roll the tape back, it's like, man, look how loud they were. They know the song better than us. <laughs> so the main thing is to show up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even if your voice is you know, not at all, almost there, they're going to finish. They, they, they'll understand, okay, I heard him sing before. This time he's already, we'll, call, we'll, call, we'll see him again. But he was just happy that you showed up. Wow. Well, well um, Franz, we got quite a few more questions for you. Then I'll get to your audience because I know they want to hear some, you want to, they want to, you want to hear from them as well. But DeFrance, okay. um, when it comes to records, you know, it's amazing how the more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, when I was growing up, we were listening to 45s and 78s. And some sounds, tell me if you agree or not, some sounds sound better on a record than they do a CD because the artist at the time is trying to catch a sound that only a record can duplicate. What do you think about that? It, it, it is a difference, but they have a lot of technology now that, that gets close to that sound. But it does it does sound different because I, sometimes I'll, I'll listen in the car, I'll listen to the live version, I listen to the studio version, and I listen, you know, and it's it's a difference. It's a, it's a difference, in, in, you know, but depending on what kind of system you have, you can kind of EQ it to get close to that. But yeah, that was, because back then, you know, they sometimes they would take one take or two takes. And, it's, and that's what you got. You, it wasn't a lot of adding this on it and putting this on it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've been around so many great artists uh, performing. 
like Johnny Gill and like the Manhattan's, uh, the Shy Lights, um, Eddie Holman. Uh, oh, hey there, lonely girl. Boy, that man was bad. Y'all find it. Find it. Um, Heat Wave, Zap. I've been on tour with all these people and I love it because they sound like the record. Oh my goodness, tell the truth. The Delphonics can harmonize like nobody's business. Um, they're, they're a strong Philly sound. So yes, and then like you said, Eddie Holman, the Manhattans. I mean, Gerald Austin can take you there. Um, I don't- oh, man, I, le I learned a lot from him. One time I stole one of his, he did this, he do this thing where he, he'll sing and he'll, and he'll walk away from the mic like he's gone, right? The crowd, and then he comes back. <laughs> And so one night uh, they were, they were, we were we were doing our bow, doing our bow, and we was walking off stage. And I ran back and grabbed the mic like Gerald and started singing, singing "Baby I'm for Real" to get a look, you know, the, the ad lib. The crowd went crazy, and I said, "So I saw Gerald that uh, in in the, in the lobby." I said, "Gerald, I want to tell you, I used one of your tricks, your tricks tonight." I said, "You know how you walk off the stage?" I said, "He said I did it." He cracked up laughing. He said, "Man, you know, he he wasn't upset about it. He's like, he was glad that I." Learn to me from him and use it for my good, you know. <laughs> wow, that's that's wonderful. That's what I, do. Um, I learned, you know, I, I, I watch my dad how he perform. I watch Gerald and them, and it's, I'm like a sponge, and it's a joy to sit there and watch them do their thing, you know. You know, um, your dad being the Duke of Earl, um, he sang so many great songs um, as we were talking. The Duke of Earl is one of my favorites, but it's not my favorite of one of his. But Duke of Earl is like an anthem because it makes you feel, it's like the most masculine song you could ever um, get behind because it makes you feel so macho. Do you, uh, is, that, is that your favorite song your dad sang? Wow, he got so many songs. Woo. That's one of my favorite songs. Um, not, I wouldn't say my favorite, my favorite. Wow. My favorite by him. He had a song called Get Down, a disco song he did. This called Get Down. Mm -hmm. I like that one because he dances in that one. You already get to see my dad dance. I uh, never saw that. And um, of course, Rainbow. I love Rainbow. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. probably say that's my favorite. By him live at the Regal Theater, Rainbow Live at the Regal Theater. Wow. There's so many other ones, A uh, Man's Temptation. Um, wow. Just Be True, Nothing Can Stop Me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, I it's, mean, close, it's close between Duke of Rail and Rainbow for me. What, yeah, what, have, what, now, don't forget um, uh, that girl to a, juice, a groovy situation. Uh, you know, that girl, boom, 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 boom. Oh, my goodness. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That is, uh, it's been a long time, sweet darling. Oh, man, that man is bad. Oh, yeah. He's bad man. <laughs> you know, you know, the lyrics, the, it's, it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, oh, yeah, and then I like, I like the instruments when it comes on. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. yeah he's dynamite it's dynamite all right let's get to the questions people are just blowing me up okay all right you, we want to take some questions all right so this is from wilson wilson from indiana he says i i've been trying to get on the sherrod show for many years now and now my luck has it that i have met the son of gene chandler how are you sir his question to you is how have you been able to stay relevant for all these years as an artist? Very good question, Wilson. Well, you can't give up, but you gotta always practice. So when the opportunity comes, you're ready. Uh, like I said, I started out doing the talent shows and then um, that led to, to doing studio sessions. Studio sessions led, led into being available when For Lovers Only needed a new member for their group, which made me be able to uh, be recorded by the Temptations who produced us, which and led to, to me being on, singing on Soul Train. Okay, along, and, and guess who was on the show that day? Prince. Oh. So I'm on the show with Prince. Prince was, was, was us and Prince. They, they uh, Glenn Jones and the Wings and Andrew Rubus, but they did, they do four, uh, to do four, four acts uh, a day. And so those are the artists, but Prince was on our actual show. What so year was this? Had, say it again. What year was this? This was 94. Wow, wow. And Prince was still cranking out hits. Were you nervous on that show? Yeah, the, the talking part, yes. You see, you see I'm, not, I'm not afraid to talk anymore, but 
the talking part, but the, the performing part, no, I was not nervous at all. Mm-hmm. And we, and of course, we being working with the temps, they had a, we had a choreographer, so we had steps. You know, we had we had steps, we had roses. So we had them in the palm of our hand. The women was going up there running to get the roses. The song mm-hmm. we did a remake of the coach, the song called "The Coach I Get to You." Mm-hmm. Now, um, very good. Now, um, let me very thank you, Wilson, for that question. We want to get to the next one, um, Ashley. This is from Ashley. She is from Miami. Her question to you is what I just asked: Do you still get nervous prior to a performance? A little bit, but I'm gonna tell you about that. Um, I used to get real nervous um, and performing, but but I could sing right in front of Otis Williams and my temps, right? But when it came in for the people, I think you know a big. Crowd, like and you see somebody like um, another artist or a DJ like Tom Joyner or you're like man I gotta do something special Tom's here you know but no what you do you do what you did in rehearsal so I went to the, I went to the throat doctor so he's fine I went to uh, Seth Riggs who, who, who teaches Michael Jackson and all these people he said you're fine did the other guys in the group sing like you tell them don't send them they're wasting their money but he said the front it's your nerves isn't it he said why you didn't just say that he said we don't we don't and of course, they don't want to put you on drugs because you might get hooked on that. So now a guy like Oza say, man, you can sing right in front of me. That You got to step it up. And so you think about it. He said, who else can you go to? So I went to my mom and said, mom, sometimes I get nervous. He said, the front, sit down. He said, uh, did you rehearse what you're going to do on that stage? I said, yes. He said, well, go out there and do what you rehearsed. Did you sound good in rehearsal? Okay, do the same thing. And I said, wow, that's right. And she said, your name is up there. They come to see you. When she told me that, that wall, that nervous wall just said, shh, shh. and I, and so I always remember that. So I go out there and when that, when that guy goes, doo, 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 but I leave the bells. We usually start with the bells doo, 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 doo. and I, and I get started, the nerves is, it's gone. And before wow. you know it, you did that song, another song, another song, you did your bow, the people are screaming, happy you're off the stage and you're getting paid. Wow. So my, 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 my suggestion is, is, is when you're rehearsing, sing it just like you're going to sing it on stage. So when you go up there, you have no reason to be nervous because you know you sound good in rehearsal. So you do the same thing when you go on stage. So no, there, so no, no, there's no need to be nervous. Very good. No Very good. 15,000, two people, 100 people, no matter what. Very good. Thank you, Ashley, for that. This next question is from Anthony from Seattle, Washington. His question to you is, with your dad being in the industry, is the music industry still dirty? <laughs> I should let you have that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, it can be. That's why you have to be, it's called music business. Music, music, and business. When you get a contract, have someone look at it. Don't rush and just sign it because you're starstruck. You want to look at it. Have somebody that you trust, a lawyer, to look it over. He's going to tell you if that if that person has a has your has your good. You know, it's, it's out for you. If they're good for you, he's going to go through and say, okay, this is good, but I don't know about this. And then they'll negotiate, hoping they can negotiate it so everybody's happy. But then, then, so if you want to step in, and then it's not dirty because everything was put before you. So if you sign it, you accepted those, the, you know, what they, what, they, uh, what, they, what they put before you. So if, it, if you had no questions about it, it's not dirty because you, you had it clean. We want to say washed, you had it washed by your lawyer. You looked at it, you went to the France, okay, I don't know about this. Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? This is what this means. So you be, be very clear. So now you didn't got to worry about that. Now you just worry about the music. You concentrate on, on being creative because you already did the business part. When you write a song, get it, get it, get it, get it in your name as, as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Take, you know, you got to take care of your business. So if you take care of your business, it's not dirty. You know, and that it, it can become dirty when you say, oh, I didn't know. They, oh, they go, oh, remember page number nine. <laughs> no, you, you're supposed to know those things. Mm-hmm. Know the music business. You want to be, you want to last in the business. You don't want to get hurt. You want nobody to get hurt. You to get hurt. Nobody, you know, read the, read the contract. Wow. Yeah, so it can be dirty, yeah, if you let it. Mm-hmm. Wow, very good. Now, this last question is from Patricia. I know because uh, DeFrance is very busy. I got a couple more questions for him, but this is from Patricia, and this is from, she's from Chicago. She says, I'm a big fan. I absolutely love the group and your singing. You've done a wonderful job for many years. Um, she said, you're wearing a cross, so apparently you're a man of God. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, God is first. You know, that's where I was grew. you know, like I said, learned spiritually how, how music touched the people. 
I was a church drummer when I was a kid. So they kept me out of trouble at least two days a week. Sunday, you got to be there all day Sunday. You got to go to rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and so they gave me rhythm. I started out with the little conga drums. Then Michael was playing the big ones. And then I, it was a lady drummer at the church. And she said, and I said, I said, I'm, I'm going to play those. And so I went over to the lady. I said, can you teach me how to play those? She said, yes. And, uh, and about three weeks later, believe it or not, I was a church drummer. So, but then she had just got married. So that was good for her because now she has more time to spend with her husband. Mm -hmm. She's a newlywed, you know what I mean? And so now I'm the drummer and we would travel and I've been a lot of people, but then that gave me rhythm too. So when I sing, it doesn't take me long to do a session because I'm in the pocket, you know, you know they keep telling me, no, sing it. How much you come in here? No, it's already in my, in my blood because of from playing the drums. And you know, a lot of good singers are like, like Jeffrey Osborne, um, Stevie Wonder, uh, Marvin Gaye, they play the drums. You see? Um, wow. Yeah, so yeah, I, I love God. He's all, that's the first thing when I wake up in the morning, I, I thank him for, 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 for waking me up. And then I pray for, for all my friends and, and relatives. And then and then I'll read a scripture, because a guy sends me a scripture, uh, Brother Leroy sent me a scripture, and I read that. And then I go into checking, checking this message and Facebook and all those things. But God is first, because I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. Say it, preacher. Say it, preacher. Um, and we thank you all for your questions. Um, uh, we wish we can get some more um, in, but we are running out of time. Now, um, DeFrance, tell me, where can your fans keep up with you? Where were your Facebook handles, things like that, so they can be able to ask more questions, see when you're touring again after the COVID, buy your right. albums. Okay, um, everything's under my name, DeFrance Forrest, which is D-E-F-R-A-N-T-Z. And last name is Forrest, F-O-R-R-E-S-T. Mm -hmm. And so it's DeFrance Forrest at Gmail, it's DeFrance Forrest, uh, Facebook, Instagram, everything DeFrance Forrest. So my name is very unique. So I said, I thought I'd make it easy for people to, to find me. It's right on your monitor, ladies and gentlemen. You can all be able to keep contact with him there. Now let's talk about your movies. He's not only a, an, a Grammy and award-winning artist and singer and a son of a legend, he's also an actor. Uh, talk about your movie on Amazon Prime. Wow, this movie is called The Miracle of Tony Davis. It's about a minister who was shot five times, 10 bullet holes in his body. He died for 30 minutes got gloves with heaven and came back with no brain jumping. This is a true story, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know the guy, Tony Davis. Uh, we had just recorded uh, three gospel songs before he got shot. He, he, he hadn't bothered nobody. I guess they were kind of getting initiated to a gang or something, and they just shot him. And uh, he died for 30 minutes. He said while he, was dead, while, he died, while he was dead, he floated to a place where it was beautiful colors he had never seen in his life before. He said he felt nothing but joy, love, and peace of where he wanted to come back to Earth. Now, when he came back, um, he was in the hospital, and they said, well, when we put the trek in your throat, we cut your vocal cords. So I know you're a singer and preacher. You may not be able to do those things anymore. And then they said, we're going to cut off your leg because you have no you have no feeling in your leg. And Tony, and so Tony laying there, he's like, God, what? why are you bring me back to this? He said, and he said, a boy said, you have to forgive. He said, forgive? Like, you don't even know the guy that shot him. Forgive? And, see, and so he made the choice. He said, I forgive. He said, about 12 midnight, he felt a warm sensation going through his body, like everything was moving back together. So the doctor came back in and said, okay, you know he's a miracle, man. Let's test his, let's test his uh, foot. Tony said, Tony, move your leg. Move, try to move your toe. Tony moved his toe. He said, cancel the surgery. He's been healed, you know. It, and he said, okay, well, let's check his throat. Okay. So they took the thing out, you know, the breathing thing. and said, say something. He's like, <sighs> he's like, come on, Tony. You came this far. He said, say something. He said, Jesus. So. Mercy, um, mercy. So are you playing Tony? Huh? Say it again. Are, are you playing Tony in a movie? No, I almost got Tony. I almost played Tony because they said my audition was really good because I went I auditioned for it. And so I I was supposed to play uh, a doctor and Noah Jump, uh, uh, Bishop Noah Jones, I guess was supposed to play one of the doctors, but he, he, he got ill. He couldn't make it. So then they switched me to to play uh, enough. They said, well, why don't you play yourself in the film, DeFrance? You kind of, you look the same as you did when Tony got shot, but you kind of look the same. We can do makeup, whatever. And then they said, well, no. Then the Greg said, no, I want him to play somebody else besides. We'll get somebody to play him in the film. And so I ended up playing Randy, Tony's boss, which is kind of slick guy. He smoked. You know, I don't smoke because I'm a singer, right? So, but they said, well, here, this will make it more believable. It's, it's, it's an herbal cigarette. Just kind of puff on it. You know, I said, okay, I see people smoke, but I, I can do it. <laughs> so, and so he, uh, so within a week, I ended up being three different people, but they kept changing. Okay, you're going to be this person, be this person. But like I said, 
When they give you something, you, you take a hold of it and you become that person. Don't play around with it because they somebody's giving you a chance. A lot of people want to be in that position. So when they give you a chance, you take it serious. So I read all the script and I became Randy. And so if you watch the film, my, my scene's about 12 minutes. About 12 minutes into the film, you'll see a guy, Randy, walking out with a cigarette. That's me. I'm playing Randy. Kind of a slick boss. So that's my, that's my part in the film. Give us, an, give us the title of it again so uh, we can have it on the screen. Of Tony Davis. Very cool. Very good. And that's on Amazon Prime. Um, that's yeah, your, and they're going to add another 30 minutes, so it's going to be called I Forgive. But right now, it's The Miracle Tony Davis on Amazon Prime. It's on uh, uh, Tubi. And it's also on Zoom. Well, it was S Zoom. It's on Zoom also. Very so good. I think it'll bless. I think it'll bless you. I'm, I'm pretty good. sure. Yes, yes, definitely check that out as well. And then, where can we purchase or your fans purchase your music? Uh, it's on the, um, all the platforms. Um, Tidal. It's on the, um, iTunes. It's everywhere. Spotify. You can listen to it on Spotify. Uh, I have a song called, I'll call the Rules. It's uh, it's by Vanguard to Blacklight. Featuring the France Forest. It's called The Rules. Following the, God's rules. And then with the COVID, you know, you got to wear your mask. You got It's following the rules so you can live. And then I got another song that uh, Melvin Dino Vice produced called You're the One for Me. So it's Melvin Dino Vice uh, featuring um, the France Forest. And uh, it was actually a CD we did with uh, Charlie Wilson's on the CD and Demetri Chap is on the CD and Gary Bice is on the CD. So he decided to put us all, he worked with us previously, so he tried, decided to put us all on the same record, a compilation album. But you can get that online too also. Very good, very good. Um, DeFrance, we thank you so much for being a guest on the Sherrard Show, um, having the son of a legend who's making his own legacy um, with his great music, as well as acting. He may be known for his Hollywood uh, acting more so than his music, who knows? But DeFrance, take us out here with something that you want to sing to the audience because they keep blowing me up and they want to hear that voice again. <clears throat> okay, let me sing. I'll never hear the bells if you leave me, I'll never oh, 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 hear the bells. Oh, oh, do you hear what I hear? Ooh, you, in your lips, I kiss in mine. Bling, ba ba bling, ba ba bling, ba ba bling. Ooh, what do I have to do? To make you feel the tingling too. Bling, ba ba bong, ba ba bling, ba ba bong. Ooh, I hear the bells. Whoa, I hear the bells. Whoa, ringing in my ear. Oh, say, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me like I love you, oh baby? Oh, la, la. Oh, 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 la, la. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> my brother thank you so much you what? definitely uh, gotta pick up his music um it's the information is right on the monitor will you join us again on the Sherrard show at a later date yes i will thank you for having me so much i really appreciate you we appreciate you so much as well on tomorrow's episode we have a young lady who's a colombian singer all the way from colombia who will stop by to do some serious singing and talk about her business as well as well as her thoughts on how to make music even better. I'm Sherrard, hope you have a wonderful evening. In the meantime, check us out on Essence Television as well as iHeartRadio. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.